In today's video, I'm going to show you guys our ground deploy portable solar panels that we use in conjunction with our rooftop solar panels. What's up everybody, my name is Dan, welcome to Freely Roaming. Today I'm coming to you guys from the Normandy region of France. We've been traveling for about the last three to four weeks. We finally were able to leave Croatia once the, some of the travel restrictions have lifted. So we're making our way to the Atlantic coast in hopes that we'll get to go possibly into Ireland and perhaps into UK if the uh, restrictions there lift further. Today I want to talk to you guys about ground deploy solar panels. We have 360 watts of solar permanently mounted on the roof, but sometimes that's not enough. In cases where you just want to have a little bit of extra power, maybe in the case like today where you have a lot of clouds, some overcast skies, and your solar panels on the roof are just not producing as much as you want them to, you can take out these ground deploy portable solar panels to supplement your power output. Other situations where these might come in handy is if it's really hot, you may have a perfectly sunny day, but being out in the exposed sun, if you don't have air conditioning, if you're using solar panels, you're probably boondocking or wild camping anyways. So it's likely you're not gonna be able to have the ability to plug in and run your air conditioning if you have them on your camper. If there are trees and places nearby with shade, you can park your camper underneath and run your portable solar panel out to the open sky and then be able to charge your batteries that way while staying cool inside your camper. I've gone through several different types of portable panels in the past. I've done semi-flexible solar panels. I've done rigid solar panels. I've used these pre-made solar panels that are sort of set up in this kind of fabric case that has its own built-in stands. And currently I'm using semi-flexible solar panels that I purchased from AliExpress and I built my own aluminum frame. And the reason why I chose those over the other options are several. For the last five or six years, I was using two rigid 50 watt solar panels with aluminum frames. I connected them together using hinges, built little aluminum legs to sort of prop them up when I need them. What's nice about them is that they're very durable. They can last a long, long time. However, they do take up a lot of space. Semi-flexible solar panels take up far less space but the problem with those, they're not as durable if they're going to be used full time in the sun. A couple sets of my semi-flexible solar panels, they would work fine on a temporary basis, meaning I pull them out when I need them and put them away when I don't. Whenever I mounted them permanently to the roof and they were being used full time, they would overheat and burn out. And that's because the way that they're mounted is they're usually mounted flat to the roof and there's no airflow underneath. What you want to do with semi-flexible or any solar panels in general, you want the airflow to be able to go under and cool them off when they're in direct sun for a long period of time. There are newer semi-flexible or flexible solar panels that are better at cooling nowadays, that are more durable. But if you're buying panels at the low end of the cost spectrum, expect them to fail when they're mounted permanently. But the reason why I switched back to them for this scenario is because they're going to be used just for temporary basis. In fact, since I bought them, I've only used them probably about five or six times in about half a day to a day each. That's very, very light use of these solar panels, so I wouldn't worry about any type of damage happening to them when they're used in this capacity. What I've done with these panels is that they have grommets built into them in each of the corners, each of the four corners. I have four 50-watt solar panels. They store in the back of the van in the slot that's made specifically for portable solar panels. In fact, in the space that I was able to store just two 50 watt panels with these semi-flexible panels, I can easily store four of them. So I have double the capacity. And I think if I really wanted to, I might even be able to fit five, if not six of these panels, giving me potentially a capacity of 300 more watts that I can ground deploy when I need to. And being that these are semi-flexible, they don't have any ability to kind of stand on their own. So what I've done is I've built these aluminum frames using aluminum L angles and stainless hardware. I built them into frames that can be disassembled and packed down very small so that when I take the solar panels apart and take the frame apart, I can stash them away and just reassemble them and use them when I need it. As you can see, I use aluminum angles here and just stainless hardware. They're labeled for top and bottom. 
and also the panels are labeled one left from the front one right from the front just in case <clears throat> there are any discrepancies with where I drill these holes through the grommets in the aluminum that they fit correctly so there are six pieces of uh, stainless bolts that come through that secure these that make the rectangle frame and then this one is just another extrusion and down on the bottom I just have this rope to uh, secure the length of the leg so it's at the right tilt angle on both sides <clears throat> so they're tilted like this and I can I have three other or two other places where I can clip this uh, this clip into to make it tilt at different angles really lightweight really compact takes a little bit of effort to set it up but they are uh, a lot more durable than the than the cheap panels cheap folding panels that you buy and far less expensive too these two panels these pairs of panels running in parallel first going to one XT90 same exact thing over here going parallel first you can't because these uh, these plugs are gendered so you can't uh, mess up where to plug them in and also they only plug in with the right polar polarity so it's pretty straightforward it goes into a series connection and then it goes into a 30 amp fuse and then I got it going all the way back to the back of the van where I have a little pigtail sticking out and that is connected to my I don't know if you can see the blue thing there that is my second Victron solar charge controller and when I connect this I'll be able to get additional solar beyond the 360 watts I have on the roof okay so right now I'm getting 200 and nine watts from the roof and then this backup one is getting should be getting nothing zero okay let's connect it see what we get there getting some voltage coming in starting to build up About an extra 100 watts. So total network power is 300 watts. Not bad. The downside to this is that it does take more time to be able to deploy them. Every time I take them out and I want to use them, it takes me about 15 minutes to set up all four panels. So they can be set up in their stand in their frames and point it to the sun. But that doesn't really bother me because I only need to do that if I'm staying someplace for longer than let's say a couple of days. If I do that and I need these solar panels to be in a stand, then it's worth it for me to spend that time setting them up and getting to use them. And if I just wanted to quickly use it in an afternoon, for example, where I just needed some sun, I can simply just lay them down on the ground and connect them to my secondary solar charge controller. Now there are solar panels that are made to be portable that can be ground deployed that comes with its own built-in stand there are several several available and i'll put links in the description for you guys to check some of them out jackery makes some of them there are several companies that make them that sell them on amazon they're generally going to cost you a little bit more money in fact some of the brand name ones will cost you significantly more money you can find cheaper ones however but what i found with these cheaper ones is that because they generally use nylon fabric or some kind of PVC plastic fabric to hold these panels together so they can fold and they can sort of stand on their own, the cheaper versions of these solar panels don't tend to have very good quality materials. The problem with these cheaper ones that you find them online 
is that the material they're using are not necessarily rated to be used for long periods of time outside. I've seen some of these where the fabric literally have just been burned away by the UV rays of the sun over a period of just a few months. And also the grommets and the, the metal hardware that they use may not be stainless or aluminum, so they can rust and corrode very easily. And that's the reason why I decided to use semi-flexible panels and build my own aluminum and stainless frame for them. I'm gonna put all the parts that I use to build this system down in the description below so you can click through and check them out. I spent less than half of the price to build this 200 watt setup as it would have been to buy even the cheapest portable 200 watt solar panel that you can find on the market. So there you go, that's my setup of my portable 200 watt ground deploy system. They are really, really handy for many, many reasons. And it saved us a bunch of times in situations where the rooftop panel simply won't be enough. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If you guys like what you're seeing, I appreciate it if you give us a thumbs up. Subscribe for more videos below. Thanks for your support. Thanks for the patrons on Patreon. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.